Hey there friends, how's it going? I'm Ben Snow and in this video we're gonna take a closer look at the evil path in Hogwarts Legacy. You know, the whole concept of choosing your own house, attending classes, learning magical spells, and exploring Hogwarts and its surrounding areas had me sold on Hogwarts Legacy the moment it was announced. They didn't have to add more. But now I'm going absolutely nuts about the fact that they added the most desired feature, the ability to choose either good or evil path. And I'm sure so many of you have been willing to become like a major villain of the Wizarding World, like Voldemort or the Death Eaters, learn dark magic and wreak havoc wherever you go. And it looks like you will absolutely be able to do that in Hogwarts Legacy. The entire theme of the new trailer was all about the dark magic. The logo was featured in silver rather than usual bright gold. The official sunny and brightly colored art was turned into this cloudy, gloomy, and desaturated poster. Even the avatar is featured in new Death Eater-like outfit while charging up undoubtedly Avada Kedavra. So how do you become evil in Hogwarts Legacy. What do you do to set yourself on the path of a villain? Do you just unlock unforgivable curses and go nuts? Well, it's not that simple. So in Hogwarts Legacy, there's going to be a big emphasis on the story and the choices you make along the way. Whenever you make friends, meet enemies, or face a problem, you will be given a choice on what exactly you want to do next. And then with each choice, your path will slowly steer towards either good or evil side. In this new trailer, we get a great example of that. Here we have our main character helping our friend from Slytherin, who's on a quest to solve his family's curse. Which brings us to this chamber of Salazar Slytherin, somewhere deep in the Forbidden Forest. Not the Chamber of Secrets that we saw in the movies, but a similar looking one that also has something sinister hidden inside, which is what Sebastian is trying to get to. But in order to get inside the chamber, he needs to pass a little test. That door with mourn faces requires a little sacrifice in order to be unlocked. Pain and suffering must be inflicted on someone in order for it to open. And this is where Sebastian invites the main character to partake in dark magic and use the Cruciatus Curse. This is where we make our choice. We either agree to learn and use the Unforgivable Curse on this Slytherin guy, or refuse to use dark magic and have Sebastian cast it on us instead. Our choice then steers our path towards one or the other side. If we choose the good side, we refuse learning the dark magic and Sebastian tortures us, the door opens and we start seeing him as this evil monster. Basically, he becomes like our enemy. Some hell breaks loose and Sebastian gets disarmed, possibly by us, then separated from us by hordes of Inferi, and maybe possibly dies? Or at least we save him and then he gets in trouble, because then the caretaker comes in. Or we go the evil path, torture that poor student, battle in fair together with Sebastian, discover whatever needs to be discovered in the chamber and get out safely and become dark magic pals. Though as a result, here's about the consequences, you get reported to the headmaster and both of us get into trouble. But on the bright side, you know the Cruciatus Curse and you can continue using it in the wild. But that's probably where Dementors come in. And if you continue using the Unforgivable Curses, they start looking for you and, if caught, take you to Azkaban. And keep in mind that this is just a side quest. Chandlerwood mentioned this himself. This is a non-mandatory side story quest that you may or may not do where you get to torture a student. <laughs> this is not even part of the main story which is about our character's talent of sensing and using powerful ancient magic. And there's Rookwood and Renrock with Goblin Rebellions who will definitely be interested in our talent, and after facing them, we will have to make the choice and end up using the ancient magic for either good or evil purposes. I'm sure they're keeping all that under wraps for spoiler purposes, but the most exciting part is that it might develop into multiple different scenarios, 
which I think will eventually bring us to the teased Battle of Hogwarts. Because after all, Hogwarts is a stronghold of ancient magic. And in the end, we might have either good or evil endings. By the way, a video about the Battle of Hogwarts is in the works. But this is so cool. Like, I'm definitely taking the dark path. It's basically going to be as if, you know, Gandalf took the ring or Dumbledore joined Voldemort. I'm going to be the most evil Hufflepuffian out there in my first live playthrough. And then maybe a kind and loving Slytherin for a change who only likes herbology and never does anything dark. Oh my god, I'm so looking forward to this. You know, Hogwarts Legacy in general seems like an awesome game, but this, it brings it to the next level, seriously. So, which house are you going to choose? And which path are you going to take in Hogwarts Legacy? Well, let me know in the comments. For now, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.